Um, either way, shall we move on? Shall we watch the Coco Melon video now? As said, the only thing I remember from Coco Melon is that all the cuts in Coco Melon are like some weird, like panning zooms that are like constantly changing scenes, very colorful, very bright, and nonsensical, nothing informative, nothing educational, just to constantly keep the attention of the child. And god damn makes does that make me miss Dora the Explorer, man? Even though I hated that show when I grew up. I hope this isn't the one that I think it is. Well, I don't know which one you're thinking of. Um, apart from that, I don't know anything. And I, this might even be another black show I was thinking about. It might not even be Cuckoo Melon. Brain Rot? Yes, it's basically just Brain Rot. My son is almost two and I've been letting him watch Cuckoo Melon. But now oh, I had no. to get him speech therapy so I can get him to talk. There are hundreds wow. and hundreds of anecdotes in which parents mention the exact same problem. The Cuckoo Melon show Damn. is so insanely addictive, it's being compared to nicotine and causing developmental issues amongst the kids who can't stop Excuse watching. Excuse you! Children Excuse you! As addictive as nicotine? Th what? And I believe it. I believe it too. No, no, no I believe it too. I want to percent believe it too. But the fact that this is allowed to exist. Nicotine is less addictive, ex uh, exactly. Or do you mean actually? Bro! I'm shook. TV expert Jerrica Sands calls it the most damaging show a child can watch, explaining the sneaky. Most damaging show, but it's still only 32 out of 100. Why isn't it at a zero? Sands then? calls it the most damaging show a child can watch. Why are they putting two year olds in front of the screens? I know, right? Like, oh, uh, it's parents that don't actually want a child that just want a pet to dress up. They want a doll to dress up. That they, they don't want to be a parent. Explaining the sneaky ways in which they make the show addictive. Firstly, there's the colors. Take, for example, the wheels that on the bus. It, the three main colors, it? blue, green, That's and colors. yellow, are all at maximum saturation, meaning they cannot be made any brighter, no matter how hard you try. Extreme. No way. Is it actually at maximum saturation? No fucking way. Chad, I'm testing that. I'm opening my program. My, my Clip Studio Paint has a feature to like select the screen color on the bus the three main colors oh my god chat i i i'm scared i'm testing it right now let me um you open a new canvas got to go kitsu oh uh, see ya see ya thanks for hanging up though edit um pick screen color no, i can get more saturated I can get more saturated. I can a slightly more, <laughs> slightly more, but it's almost at max. I can still get a bit higher. Blue, green, and yellow are all at ma maximum saturation. Let me, let me see this again. Now that he put these on screen, pick color. Nope, it's not at maximum. Let me think for a second. This is brightness. Wait, wait, wait. Give me a moment. Saturation. It's at 74% saturation. Like, I'm looking at the color slider. Uh, I don't know if I can show this even. Anyhow. Because it's on a completely different screen. Um, the yellow, at least. I'm gonna test the pick screen color. I'm gonna test the green. Green is at 100 saturation. Chad, green is at 100 saturation. Pick the blue. The blue is at 80. But yet again, they're still extremely fucking bright. The green is at 100, yellow at 74, and blue at 80. That's still awfully bad. Meaning they cannot be made any brighter, no matter how hard you try. I, I just kind of... I just kind of want to put a screenshot of it on the screen now, just to prove that wrong. <laughs> like, I literally just want to prove it wrong. I, 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 I'm such a bitch, man. 
Like... Uh, how could I do that? I could take a screenshot of uh, this. Put this in here. Control T, make this bigger. Okay, 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 chat. I will show you how to make a brighter art stream. We're swapping over to the art stream. Here. You can't see the entire thing. You can't see the color slider. Can I show you the color slider any differently? Uh, if I put it here, maybe? No. Can't see it. Here. You can see it a tiny bit. You can see it on the top right, okay? You can see it on the top right. So, here... 74%. Now let me dial it all the way up to 100. That's the high saturation. <laughs> green is at 100, though. The screen is at 100. The value of it is... The value meaning the... Okay, so saturation basically means how bright the color is. Like shadow and darkness. Value is how, like, colorful the color is, if that makes any sense. 80% is, and this is 100%. Here. Yeah. There. Just. Luminosity. Yes, yes! Saturation can be luminosity. Basically, if I go all the way to 0%, it goes white. If I'm all the way at 100%, it goes to the darkest one. Value is, like, how deep the color itself is. Sorry, random artist nerd moment. <laughs> random artist nerd moment. Duration, meaning they cannot be made any brighter, no matter how hard you try. Extreme saturation is normally used for alerts and notifications, as yes. it's exciting, dynamic, and attracts attention, yes. which is why it's also used in slot machines. Yes, yes, yes. Also, that's nothing to say that it's still not bad. Like, I actually feel like the color uh, on the yellow and the blue, the color they've chosen are actually way better to perceive with the eye uh, and with the brightness level of it. Coco Melon puts saying, these colors in perfect contrast, to, making them appear even colors. more the vibrant, others, which is different to the others were more like dirty. To, for example, bluey, in which the colors instead blend together. Coco Melon's also different because it's highly repetitive. There's a reason they have 38 videos with over a billion views. A child's brain is billion! wired to learn through repetition, so it feels right to them to watch the same thing over and over again. Coco Melon abuses this in almost every video. For example, in the Yes Yes Playground song, they pick a word to repeat three times. Yay, 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 I like them. Oh, yes, 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 I want to wear my shoes. Stomp, 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 I like them. Wow, yes, 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 I want to wear the sunscreen. There's nothing of value in this sentence. Times in every sentence, pairing it with a subtly repeating background lullaby, keeping children hooked. Literally no show or movie puts my son into a deep trance the way Coco Melon does. The second it's on the TV, he turns into a toddler zombie who doesn't see or hear anything else that's going on in the room. This is I really hope my sister didn't show her children Coco Melon. I really, really hope. I have no idea if she did or not. Why is it that repetition of words make me feel uncomfortable? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because people usually don't repeat things that way? Toddlers should only listen to 90s rock and 70s soul music. True! It's only exacerbated by Coco Melon's subtitles, which have also been a heavy point of criticism. The letters are not educational. I can barely read them fast enough. It's simply another interesting element to capture your yeah, little it's one's attention. it's literally just... More... It's... It's not a buzzword, but it's like a buzz trigger, you know? It's like another, like, point of attention for... Attention grabbing point. Fuck, man. My English is so bad. I need to educate myself in more English. Man.
I can't be a professional yep and not be able to speak half of the fucking time. <laughs> Coco Melon explains in every description, our goal is to help make learning a fun and enjoyable experience for kids, giving you the peace of yeah, mind that right. your children are receiving quality education. <laughs> Quality and educational, educational content. content. Yes, yes, yes. I want to stomp or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. I like my shoes. Yay. But people have argued that they're teaching exactly what children shouldn't do. For example, in the No No Bedtime song, the baby refuses to brush his teeth, have a wow. bath, put on pajamas or get in bed. The edgy... <laughs> The baby just refuses? The implication is that he eventually agrees to do so, yet a TikTok user was critical, stating, Anytime I'd ask my son to do a simple task, he'd say no, no, no. He's sitting there watching wow. Coco Melon, which taught him no, 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 and to say no to me. No. <laughs> Chat? Is this the consequence of consequences of their parents own action technically it is unfortunately the entire world has to bear with those children now it is the consequences of their own actions they have put them in front of the screen this is why Gen Alpha is so wild. This is one of the reasons, yes. This is absolutely one of the reasons because fucking millennials and Gen Z parents don't want to fucking parent their own children. That's not to say that all of them do that, obviously. But there's a huge, huge, huge fucking amount of people who just don't want to fucking parent. They want a fucking pet to dress up and look cute. They want a mini-me. On the topic of education, Jerrica San stated, these people don't give a shit about our children. They- Yep, definitely don't. Reminds me of my friend's niece. Uh, his sister raised her on Minecraft and crap and she is fully addicted to her phone at age seven. Age seven! Oh my god, I haven't had a phone until I was like 12! Bro! And that- Bro, smartphones didn't- Well, they did exist. I didn't have a smartphone though. I had a fucking- Like- Key phone. I had a Sony Walkman. I love that phone. <laughs> I love that phone. Like a Fox VTuber said, people don't beat their kids anymore. <laughs> I wonder what I wonder what Fox VTuber said that. <laughs> I, I can't think of any Fox VTuber. Who? <laughs> Who said that? Fillion? Tenma? Alana? <laughs> But Kitsu couldn't be Kitsu, right? Kitsu wouldn't say something like that. Right? Right? <laughs> care about money. That's it. Your child's cognitive development in direct exchange for oh, yeah, their wealth. Yeah, and there's yeah, yeah. pretty good evidence <laughs> supporting this. A New York... And yeah, that's true. They only care about the fucking money. <laughs> Times journalists visited Coco Melon's studio, discovering their number one focus is keeping children hooked. Coco Melon's yeah, data course. and analytics team sifts constantly through YouTube numbers to determine exactly what resonates. Should a girl wear black jeans or blue jeans? Should the music be louder or softer? Should the bus be yellow or red? Yellow is the answer, as they okay. use a darker method to ensure that they're correct. Coco Melon has a dedicated Distractatron room in which once a month what? children are brought here one at a time and shown a handful of episodes to figure out exactly which parts of the shows are engaging and which are tuned out. Oh my god. They actually, actually ha have... Oh my god. I... I... I don't know what to say, bro. This is outrageous. Next to the TV playing Coco Melon, there's a second screen which plays a continuous loop of banal real world scenes. A guy pouring a cup of coffee, someone getting a haircut, each lasting about 20 seconds. Whenever a youngster looks away from the Moonbug show to glimpse the Distractatron, a note is jotted down. Bruh! Bruh! We can see what the they're looking the at and the span. exact. Yeah! Destruction, yeah, attention span destruction. Oh Moment my when god. They got distracted. Therefore, education clearly isn't the primary goal. Keeping kids' attention is, and this is proven by Coco Melon's most addictive element rapid camera cutting. It's Dennis! Called it! Called it! Called it! Remembered it! 
Your fox VTuber is smart after all. It's crazy how many times the frame changes on Coco Melon. It's the same type Isn't of addicting like behavior or something? that we experience on a TikTok binge. It's the quick change of frame that releases that dopamine and makes the videos addicting to watch. Count the seconds between <gasps> oh a change my of God. frame. Well, TikToker the circus brain did exactly this. He firstly counts the changes on My Little Pony, concluding there's about six seconds between each cut. He then compares it to Coco Melon. One. Two, one, two. It was two. Three, one, two, one, two, oh my one, god, it was two, one. Oh my two, god. One, oh my god. One. In her video, the nightmare that. Oh, bro. Each cut. He then compares it to Coca Melon. One, two, one. Like, just. I, I, I wanna, uh, oh, look at the cuts without any sound. Like, Oh my god. It's just so bad. It's just so, so bad. As someone who does editing, this hurts my eyes. As someone who appreciates good editing, this hurts my eyes. This is how they're losing it is. Video The Nightmare That Is Coca Melon, Cervantix draws a similar conclusion. She found that 96% of the shots in Baby Shark were shorter than two seconds. Wait, Baby Shark originates from Coco Melon? I had no idea. As the hashtag says, uh, Sammy Street is better. Of course it is! She then compares four different animated shows, again finding Coco Melon has the shorter shots. The longest shot on a Coco Melon video was six seconds. The longest shot on Arcane was eight seconds. The longest shot on Bluey was 27 seconds. And the longest oh, wow. shot on Encanto was 18 seconds. Which, when combined with every other element, creates some terrifying statistics. Dr. Kristen Summer explained that when showing an infant normal video content, they'll focus on the screen just 11% of the time. However, when the video is instead switched to Coca Melon, their screen engagement skyrockets to a whopping seventy-four percent. Wow! Louis wow. an amazing show. I heard only good things about Bluey. I use Baby Shark to torture my listeners when they are hungry. <laughs> oh my god, no! Like they. Are min maxing destroying an attention span, man. They are min maxing psychological fucking tricks on children. Shouldn't that be like low key criminal? Like, isn't that low key? Like, I don't know. Are there any laws that would prevent this? <laughs> any loopholes? Any, any way? Oh my god, it should be, yeah. Oh my god. This therefore produces stories such as this. I used to volunteer for a preschool and warfare, they had yes. song time. A Coco Melon video came on and all of the tots stopped what they were doing, put down their cheese crackers and remained fixated on the screen for the duration of the video. It was honestly kind of terrifying. Oh my god. I low-key. And I know this is terrible and I, I'm... I am not going to do it, but I low-key want to test it on the children of my sister. Just to, like, see if it instantly, like, grabs their attention. You know? Oh my god. This is so bad. Bro, why Coco Melon Choo Choo Baby is where it's at? I don't know what Choo Choo Baby is. YouTuber Saber Human experiment kids. Yeah, I know. I know it's bad. I know. That's why I said I'm not going to do it. But it's like something so fucking interest in in a sense it's very interesting to see like how the fuck human mind just works. Like how it just instantly grips them. Like, oh, oh my god. They're putting messages in the kids had to activate one day in the future. <laughs> <laughs> the tinfoil heads! Let's get the tinfoil heads out! Starting to think people are being turned into brain dead people, so we never notice how bad things are getting. More tinfoil heads! <laughs>
<laughs> My Twitter full of when you come home from military memes again. Okay. What? <laughs> We are doomed, we are doomed. Buck shared his own personal anecdote. He asked to watch a Disney movie with his two younger cousins, who okay. both completely refused, and instead spent all day glued to an iPad playing the addictive show. Yikes. And Disney was the good shit growing up, man. Like, the Disney movies were the good shit growing up. They refused. In Coco Melon Made My Kid a Zombie, a mother talks about her son. He would be in a daze while watching it. You could be waving your hand right in front of his face and he wouldn't move. It was almost scary. This was also discovered wow. by Sarah Mills 98, who explained when the Coco Melon addiction <laughs> is so real Oops. that my one year old can navigate <laughs> the TV to turn it on by himself. What? Bro, what? Also discovered by Sarah Mills 98. Look at his fingers. To explain when the Coco Melon addiction is so real that my one year old can navigate the TV to turn it on by himself. Like, on one hand, wow, that he's figured out how to do it. On the other hand, it's for the brain rot content. Like,. Wow. However, nothing shows the addiction better than the Coco Melon TikTok trend. Parents will play the show's intro loudly and video their kids sprinting toward the television where Ain't you can no witness way. their mood change instantly. The New York Times Ain't journalist no found something similar. The kid in the Distractatron had- There, that, there people already did it. I don't even need to do it, man. Shown up in the midst of a tantrum, which ended the second he heard the Coco Melon theme song. It's actually brainwashing. Oh my god, it's actual brainwashing. It was no surprise to Wheeler, it's actually, the head of research. It's actually brainwashing. 99% of kids, he said, if they're having issues when they get here, once that Coco Melon song comes on, they're like, ah, life is okay. All is good with the world. Obviously, it's there's a reason for this. Coco Melon yeah, is so yeah. hyper-stimulating that it actually acts as a drug and what happens when you take the drug away. Young children experiencing symptoms of addiction and withdrawal, obviously leaving them completely dysregulated. Oh my god, yep, definitely more addictive than nicotine. I can ignore my vape for a day or two. Damn. Worse than brainwashing. Yes! Worse than brainwashing. We are heading towards 1984. Hell yeah, baby. Hell yeah. I saw the plan to make a group of adolescents that grew up of Coco Melon fault for their next psychological attack. <laughs> ah! TikTok user ThePoff1 filmed what happens when you take the show away, explaining he'll be inconsolable for at least 10 to 15 minutes after, adding in the description Coco Melon Meltdown is legit. Once you have a taste of the cocoa, it's hard to break the addiction, which this Reddit user had experienced even worse. My husband and I have been worried about our child. I can slowly see how she'd throw violent tantrums at home and in church whenever she'd get bored and would want to watch the show. Her behaviour changed changes the moment she watches the show, and she will not even eat her meals if she wouldn't watch it. After wow. These wow. Again, consequences of their parents' action. Consequences of the parents' action. Which is not to say that the company who created Coco Melon isn't at fault at all. They're both at fault. Both are at fault. The parents and the company who is creating this bullshit. Both are at fault for different reasons. Parents are at fault for failing parenting. Where they should have monitored what they fucking put in front of their child. And the company for abusing it, obviously. Because they know ch uh, parents are f fucking non-caring. ...end, kids can experience... My little bro got his iPad taken away for about half a year now. He has officially stopped lashing out and screaming at my mom and dad. I don't know if it is because he doesn't think like other people, but that shit he watches is absolutely horrendous. Jesus, man. How old is your little bro, though? We will be stuck between this and get, get, Ohio wrestlers. We are so dumb. <laughs> Ohio wrestlers! It's a general discomfort in the speed of everyday life. The more they watch the show, the more their brain begins to expect 
create this intense level of stimulation. Basically, Coco Melon overstimulates their brains so much that everything else just seems slow and boring in comparison. However, the potential Jesus, consequences man. get much worse than this. I place most of it on parents, but I also know I ignored warnings and did stuff as a kid anyway. Okay, so I, I don't blame it on these kids at all. Some of these kids are one year to two years to three years old, right? Those children, they're completely taken out of it. No blame on the fucking children. None. No blame on the children. Blame on the company who created Cucumelon and blame on the parent. Now. The parents? It's their fault, obviously, for not parenting properly. They don't wanna care about what their child watches. They, in a sense, at the same time, they grew up on kids' shows probably too, that they watched on TV, not on a fucking iPad. And they thought, oh yeah, a children's show, educational and fun, right? Everyone likes this one, so it should be fine. So they let their kid watch it. Little did they know, it's really, really, really bad. Because as a parent, as your average parent, do you really know what's really, really good for a child? And, well, what's educational and what would be addictive? I, I see Coco Melon and I think that that shit's just trash and garbage and doesn't have any educational value. But yeah. A point was I bypassed stuff anyways, but I 100% agree. Okay, but how the fuck is a one or two year old gonna bypass uh, uh, a, a, an iPad being taken away? You know what I mean? Like, obviously. Growing up, a lot of us just bypassed stuff anyways. A lot of us were just fucking rebels. I'm not saying we weren't. But as a parent, you should be able to monitor a fucking toddler. You should be able to know what your toddler does at most times of the day anyway. 99% times of the day, man. They want to have kids and then fail at parenting. Yes! That, that's the thing. They don't actually want a kid. They don't actually want a fucking kid. They want a fucking doll or a pet to show off. They want a show pony. They don't want a kid. Nintari just cheered 100 bits. Cheer 100, I don't want any children. But if I did, they would grow up with 1990 SpongeBob, yep, yep, Donald yep. Duck, Captain Barlow, and later on Scrubs to ensure them being based and decent. Yep. Good choice. Good choice. I showed my four year old nephew Yu Gi Oh! A. Hey. <laughs> As mentioned at the start, it was the cause of a child's speaking problems. With a notable reply reading, same thing happened with my daughter too. She's four but can't speak properly. She knows the words. Chat? I have a weird deja vu feeling. I have a really, really weird deja vu feeling right now. Huh? Yeah, sorry about that. But she does not like to frame the sentence or speech. She has been watching these Coco Melons or such other stuffs for two or three years. Hope we're not too late. Over on Reddit, a speech language pathologist explained, screen time in general is linked with speech delays for a variety of reasons, but Coco Melon is excessively bad. Yep. Firstly, unlike other TV shows or movies, it doesn't have a story. It's that, just very short clips with is. poorly written songs. That's where the problem is, and there is, that is what parents should be able to identify, that it doesn't have any educational value, that it doesn't try to teach the child anything. 
things. The kids aren't able to follow the plot, learn vocabulary, and see the resolution of a conflict, supported by infant specialist Meg Fora. And the problem with fast-paced TV programs is that we find that little one's language development is slower. On the Agents of Speech YouTube channel, this is again confirmed. The main problem with watching videos on the internet is that they don't know how to use the language that they learn. But he adds that four to five hours of screen time per day can make a toddler completely non-verbal. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Four to five hours is obviously a lot of time, but in Coco Melon Made My Kid a Zombie, researchers discovered that five year olds who watch more than two hours of TV a day tended to have lower attention spans and were 7.7 .7 times more likely to show symptoms of ADHD. Discover that five year olds who watched more than two hours of TV a day tend not to have lower attention spans and were 7.7 .7 times more likely to show symptoms of ADHD. I want to say my siblings had more than two hours of TV screen time, but not of Coco Melon, of actually like shows like. The ones you guys mentioned, right? Stuff like Blue's Clues, Dora the Explorer, that kind of stuff. Disney movies. But with Coco Melon, if it's just pure Coco Melon, two hours and more? Jesus. Yeah. These screen times might be even lower for Coco Melon specifically, because as explained by Jerrica Sands, not all it screen time is created equal. A child who just watched 30 minutes of Coco Melon and a child who just watched 30 minutes of Trash Truck will look like a very, very different child. Jesus. Thankfully, here lies a simple solution. Sierra Renee explained my two year old is stuff. speech delayed and addicted to Coco Melon. Switched to Miss Rachel two days ago, and he's already saying more words and hasn't had any tantrums. Wow. <laughs> the fact that he was able to have no tantrums within two days is crazy. Kim.it shared an almost identical anecdote. My eight month old was obsessed with Coco Melon and having bad tantrums, so I cancelled Coco Melon and only let her watch Miss Rachel, and Ms. she Rachel? said her first word. What is Miss Rachel? Yo, Miss Rachel W? What is that? Within the first three days of watching. Clearly, parents are able to simply change the channel, but not before Good. leaving Coco Melon a massive amount of dislikes. I'm I'm glad that uh, more and more parents are coming to realize though how freaking bad Coco Melon is, and I'm glad that actions are being taken. I'm really glad that actions are being taken. They've therefore earned the title "The Absurdly Popular Kids Show Parents Hate," and Coco Melon has actually responded to the criticism that explain our shows are not intended to. Greeny one just cheered 100 bits. Thank you. Ah yes, the solution is to actually be a parent who would have thought. What? The solution is to actually monitor what your child watches? Crazy. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that they are taking actions though. Maybe it's a bad sign if we have to put someone needs to be put into some kind of behavioral therapy when they have a single digit age. Well, yes. Yes, it is a bad sign. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> no way. Can YouTube ban the stuff? Doesn't look good to have the stuff on your platform, in my opinion. Nintari just yeah, cheered 100 bits. I would hope. The era of showing your kid hardcore gore and horror movies being less damaging than stuff like Coco Melon. We done, bro. Yeah, Pack your right, stuff man. and leave the planet. You're actually right, man. Like, we grew up with freaking Happy Tree Friends, man. Happy Tree Friends to be shown to us randomly. Or Elsa Gate, man. Like, completely fucking randomly exposed to that shit. And we turned out somewhat all right, I would say. <laughs> somewhat. We may have like seven different mental illnesses and we may not touch a lot of grass, but at least we have some critical thinking. <laughs>
<laughs> Just watch Serbian film? Yeah, how about no? How about no? Place outdoor playtime or playdates. They have a place in children's entertainment time. And as with food, exercise, etc., it comes down to each parent to find the right- Oh my god, fucking Ren and Stimpy, man. Oh my god, bro. I still remember one episode of Ren and Stimpy that actually fucking traumatized me. Which one was which in Ren and, Ren and Stimpy? I, I gotta get my effects right. Ren and Stimpy. Uh, Ren is the red one and Stimpy is the chihuahua looking one, right? Stimpy is a cat? Well, I guess Stimpy is a cat then. I don't fucking know. It looks like a fucking chihuahua to me. Ren was the psychotic one? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Stimpy is... Ah, Stimpy is the goofy one and... Ren is the psychotic one. Okay, okay, okay. So... I... Never liked that show. <laughs> because it was so fucking weird and disturbing to me. But... One day in switching the TV channels, I have come across a show... Um, not come across the show. I've come across an episode of Ren and Stimpy where Stimpy, the cat, right? Uh, where Stimpy had a chicken best friend? I believe. Like, it was literal meat. It was meat. It was a fucking chicken best friend. But for some reason, the chicken. At like a consciousness, I I think, and I don't know. I think Stimpy got fucking um jealous and whatnot, and decided to grind the bitch up into sausages and ate it. And Ren came into the room as Stimpy was eating it, and that shit had me fucked up. That shit had me so fucked up, bro. That was so messed up, bro. Like, it was actually a being that fucking Stimpy actually really fucking cared about and that- Bro! Bro! Oh my god! And Stimpy Chicken... Episode... The Red and Stimpy Show... I Love Chicken... That might be the episode... Yeah, that's the episode. I love chicken. I think. Bro, that, that should have me fucked up, bro. That should have me so fucked up. What happened to kids not being seen as idea machines? Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, either way, let's move back to Coco Melon. I don't want to think about appropriate this appropriate balance for their children. Our responsibility is ensuring that the quality of the content that we produce is high and beneficial for the development of a child's cognitive and soft skills. It is worth adding that our social media communities are filled with stories of parents who experience firsthand how Moonbug content helps their children. Cocomelon does have a crazy amount of supporters, but it's obvious that some of them are simply ignoring the downsides. Yeah, when they just don't know. They're just happy that their child is distracted when they don't need to parent their child, man. Actually, disgusting. Baby learned the alphabet and numbers from Cocomelon. She may not speak a complete sentence, but she expresses her wants through phrases. Yeah, and how old is your baby? Is she five? Is she six? How old is she? Huh? But is it Coco Melon's responsibility to ensure that babies are talking? Well, no. People love blaming cartoons and games for raising children, and not the shitty parents that don't step in to stop them from watching so much. Yes, but it's both their fault. A shitty parenting and it's exploiting children. Cocomelon is actually a really sad symbol of parents giving their children tablets instead of actually parenting and interacting with them. Ultimately, parents are the people who choose how much their child consumes. It shuts the baby up so it's good for them. Yeah, that's what they think. Exactly. And that's where the fault in the parent lies in. That's where the fault in the parent comes in. So, yeah, it's both are at fault. I don't know to what percentage and to what degree, and I don't think that matters at all, but both are at fault. Spectre TNM, thanks for the follow. 
And with that, I would say we end the video here. Thanks for watching, YouTube. And see you next time.